Well, people from all over will be coming to the Green Mountain State to take in the total solar eclipse this afternoon. And joining us now is Dr. Jack Bacon, former NASA scientist and all things, an expert in all things eclipse. Dr. Bacon, thank you for joining us this morning. It's a real pleasure. Fun to be here. Well, Dr. Bacon, you've worked for 30 plus years at NASA, which is incredible in itself, and this will be your fourth total solar eclipse. It is. Speaking more as a space enthusiast than an actual rocket scientist, how excited are you? <laughs> I'm very excited. I'm a bit of a technological historian, and I've seen stone circles around the world from places where we don't even have the writing. We don't know who made them, but we know that they were trying to track eclipses back before they had writing. Really amazing. Yeah. Absolutely. Really, really cool stuff. And now we've done extensive reporting on the eclipse, but obviously we're not the experts here. Can you describe the process of the eclipse for a place like Burlington that's in the path of totality? Yeah, uh, about every 400 years on average, any spot on Earth may see a total eclipse. And so this is our year up here. Uh, the moon is in orbit around us, but it's on a bit of a tilt. And so it takes a while for it to get in sync to where it is in line with the sun. So very rarely will it actually get from one end or the other of this long tilted uh, orbit yeah. to land directly in front of the Earth. Then a lot depends on where we are in our turn around and during the day, whether we'll see it or not. And uh, it's just a bit of statistics, but it finally all works out for everybody at least once every few centuries. It's yeah. about time, yeah. Very cool, very <laughs> cool for us. And are you hoping this eclipse will inspire young people to take up a career in STEM or space? Oh, absolutely, yeah. This is one of those fundamentally primal events that will really stick with you the rest of your life. Uh, watching a space launch is the same kind of thing. Words and pictures don't do it justice. You have to see it yourself. And of course, and now the day is here now. Any last minute tips uh, for viewers, really anyone to keep in mind as they head to the door today? Well, first of all, make sure that you've got approved solar glasses. Yeah. Uh, just, yep, you have them there. We got them um, ready to go. I would recommend that if you want to get a picture of it, uh, it is possible to take your glasses and stick them directly in front of your uh, phone camera. So take the camera and put the glasses in front. Um, do not look at the sun directly when you're doing it, but yeah. then uh, across the lens, it, you'll get a pretty good picture that way. Um, one other thing you can do with these glasses to make sure they're up to snuff is take a look at your cell phone light when you look okay. through the lens and you should see a very dim bulb. Are ours good to go? Ours are good to go. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. you, yeah, you can see there's that. a very faint dot. Yeah. You should be able to see the dot, but not terribly brightly. And then you know the glasses are up to snuff. All yeah. right, yeah. perfect. Cool. Dr. Bacon, thank you so much for joining us It's this a real morning. pleasure. Uh, as always, a joy to be in upstate uh, Vermont and also to be under such an amazing event. Of course. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. <laughs> And our coverage continues with our Eclipse Special Report Live, kicking off at 3 this afternoon. We're live across Vermont and the North Country. Join us as we count down to the solar spectacle of the century. That's today at 3.